next, uh, Jonas Hugel and Tosina Steary coming up. Um, and let me just see if I can queue up your slides. Quickly. Okay, um, thank you for the kind introduction. Um, I will present the TSPM plus algorithm, uh, high performance algorithm to mine transit, um, transitive sequential patterns from clinical, um, yeah, clinical data, electronic healthcare data, which could be, for example, uh, stored in an I2B2 data mart. Um, yeah, as we all know, um, big data in healthcare um, allows for a lot of possibilities how we can use this data and for example if we apply the correct sophisticated analysis, analysis approaches we can use this to for new diagnosis of rare diseases new treatment options improvement in drug development population health, health management disease prevention control or also classification of diseases one of these approaches um, that's the wrong slide. Yeah. Um, one of these approaches is association, association rule mining, um, which tries to extract specific patterns from these electronic data so that you can then, and so that you can use this. For example, if you have a set of roots or a set of variables that are given. If you have a specific set of ICD codes, you can say this patient has this disease, or you should, as, as the next step, you should perform one a specific um, procedure. But we have one problem with association rule mining. This typically overlooks the temporal relationships which are inherently possessed by EHA data. If you take a look at the patient, we, we have different visit, uh, visits of the patient and just by na the nature of the data, we have some kind of temporal relationships in there. And if we apply sequential pattern mining, we respect these temporal patterns when we then take this data and feed it in into downstream machine learning apl uh, applications. And as a result, we get an increased signal detection in these applications, which we can then use for a bet for, yeah, uh, which we can use for better, um, for better disease classification for, or for more detailed, info, uh, to extract more detailed information. Also, applying sequential pattern mining allows for new use cases, as, uh, as for example, the implementation of the WHO post-COVID definition. Um, but how does uh, this transi transitive sequential, uh, so the sequential pattern mining work? Uh, Hossein S. Steary um, developed the transitive sequential pattern mining algorithm, which boosts the machine model performance. Um, it's implemented in R, and we start uh, with an uh, export of our patient data from, the, from for example, I2B2. Um, then we have here, we see we have our patients. Um, for each patient, we have all the records, which might be concept IDs or from I2B2, and for, for each of these records, we have one corresponding date. Now, if we want to mine transitive sequences, at first we do, do to need do some kind of temporal sorting, which means we order these records for each patient by the date. That's so that the um, record with the earliest date is, is the first, and the record with the latest um, date is the last entry in our patient sequence. Now we combine these uh, records to sequences. At first, um, we combine the first entry with the second one. Um, now, because it's called transitive, sequ uh, uh, transitive sequential pattern mining, we not only combine the first with the second, but we also combine the second with the third. And we also combine the first with the fourth. And by doing that, we are um, 
this we are ensuring that we don't miss like relationships which are um, maybe obscured due, other, due to other records that, that are in between them. And we are also doing this for later records. So for the second entry, we combine it with the third to a sequence, and we also combine it with the fourth. And for the third one, only the fourth one is left. This creates, if you do this for each patient, this creates a really large amount of vector, um, a really large amount of vector of sequences for a patient. This is equal to the, uh, to the Gaussian sum of, for the number of records, so which is n minus n minus one divided by two. If you do this for multiple thousands of patients, you get a really large number of patients, um, which requires a lot of memory and also a lot of runtime, especially if the algorithm is implemented in a, program in a programming language like R, which is not really performant or which leaves room for optimization. That's why we implemented it in C++ and added additional features. So this new implementation is called TSBM plus and is designed as a high performance algorithm, which really utilizing um, the utilizing numerical data types and parallelization to gain a massive um, speed up, which we can then use um, to enable our new use cases. But how does this work here? At first, we again extract our data from the data database. Then we have the same format. We have our patient ID. We have the here it's called we have the records here called fan, phenotype fan, fan X. So for possible phenotype X, um, and we have the corresponding dates. Because if we extract these from I2B2 data, data mod, these might be alphanumeric. Which if you take a look like from a computer computer science um, side of view, uh, it's quite memory intensive, especially if you compare it like to numeric values. That's why we create a lookup table where we just, for that, we just extract the unique number of patient IDs and just assign them a running number from zero to N and then replace this um, in our data mart, replace the alphanumeric ID with the numeric one and we are doing the same with the Phoenix. Then we take our numeric data mart and sort it. We sort it by the ID as the first parameter, by the date as the second, and the Phoenix as the third. Because we have here numeric values, we, it's quite fast. We can do it. Um, it it's, we can easily apply, in C++, we can easily apply highly parallelized algorithms to do this in seconds. Even for multiple tens of thousands of patients, it's not a problem. We can sort this in seconds. Um, so um, that's why, and by doing and by sorting it, it allows us to process this as now this patients in, yeah, in parallel. So we can for each each patient is now one chunk in our data mart, which we can hand to um, one process, which can extract all the sequences in parallel, like for one patient. And in the end, we merge this together to one large patient vector. By doing this, we are avoiding costly cache invalidation and memory loading operations and doing it just like in, yeah, in sec seconds or minutes for uh, thousands of patients. But um, we, if we take a closer look at the sequence creation, uh, again, we have one example patient with four entries. Each um, Phoenix here is color coded and so that we can easily see how we create the sequence. For the first Phoenix, the orange, the orange one and um, the one, which is orange, um, and the second Phoenix, which is, a, which is red and eight. Um, if you combine this to a sequence, we take the first um, Phoenix and append the second one. But before we do it, we, fill, uh, we uh, fill up the second Phoenix on a specific length. So we add a specific number of leading zeros. Um, so that makes this number, it's still, it's still a number. So it's still, operations are still fast on it but it becomes human readable. 
So we know if we know how many how long the second um, how many numbers represent the second fangs in our sequence, we can just extract all the information by just looking at it because we see okay the second this last seven numbers um, is a is like a eight. So the end fangs is a eight and the everything before is the first fangs which is like the one. Is the one. So we can just by looking at it, we know what are the start fangs, what are the end fangs, but still have a numeric representation. And moreover, we also, um, because this is now just a number, it's just a long, so we don't require so much memory to save it. We also have the opportunity to just store the duration of the sequence. And by doing that, re enabling our um, new, new use cases and a new add a new dimension to the analysis later on. Yeah, if we take a look at the performance, um, here we have the runtime in seconds from the TCPM plus and the TCPM. The uh, bottom, the, uh, the two bars at the bottom are the TCPM runtime. So we have to say on the X axis, there's a runtime in seconds, which is on a logarithmic scale, which is important. So, yeah, TSPM plus runs in the best use case where we just write out every sequence to, directly to a file, once in 40 seconds for 5,000 patients, uh, while um, the old algorithm runs three and a half hours. If we don't do it like in this um, file mode, but keep everything in memory and also apply sparsity screening, the runtime is about one minute compared to five and a half hours if you also apply the sparsity screening on the old algorithm, which is quite a massive boost in the performance. It's up to factor 940. If we take a look at the memory consumption, it's not as good as the runtime, but it's also quite an improvement. Um, for the file-based approach, we just need 1.3 gigabyte to mine all the sequences, while we need um, 62 gigabyte for the um, TSPM, the old original TSPM implementation. And if we implement the sparsity screening, we are around 25 gigabytes compared to 205. So we have a really big boost in the here, also in the memory consumption, in, in the reduction of the memory consumption. Um, and this lead, uh, leads us to the results. Um, yeah, TSPM plus. Um, is like available as a C++ library, but also as an R package. So we packed, we built an R package which just wrapped our library and make it available to researchers. And to make it even easier to use it, we, we just put it in a Docker container with all dependencies pre-installed, so where you just need to import your data and just can apply it. But if you, if you don't want to do that, but still want to try it out, you can use one of our two vignettes which have exemplary code, how to integrate it in a machine learning workflow, or how to implement the detection of the post-COVID-19 patients and the symptoms, both with exemplary, example synthetic data. And this is also easily transfer, transferable to other healthcare domains. Now let's wrap it up. Um, in the end, we can see TSPM outperformance, TSPM, TSPM on a massive scale and while doing it, enabling new use cases, we have an easy integration into existing machine learning workflows. We have a really low entry barrier by the Docker container and the example data in the vignettes. Um, we implemented a post-COVID-19 COVID de detection, but this still requires intensive validation. This is actually done on a multi, in a multi enact partner site studies that's currently ongoing and um, it can also be applied on other discrete data from other healthcare domains. Therefore, I come to the acknowledgement. I want to like to thank everyone who helped make this possible, including the German Academic, Academic Exchange Service who funded my stay here at Ossian's Research Group. And yeah, therefore, I'm done. Here's a preprint, also a QR code for the paper, uh, for the preprint of our paper. And yeah, if you have any questions later or However, you, however, it's now organized. Um, yeah. Your questions yeah. afterwards. So, thank yeah. you.